I want to tell the story between my mentor and I. My mentor was my ninth grade humanities teacher, Heraclea Hearn. I was a shy and quiet boy back then, who usually sat in the back seat. She did not notice me at first. I had just started to study English in international school in ninth grade. It was a time when we had to write a story about our ideal world. However, I didn't write anything. Instead, I drew a storyboard because I wasn't that great at English. My story talked about how everyone truly cared about other people, and there were no global wars or domestic conflicts. Humans helped humans to evolve and develop advanced technologies. When she returned all the stories, she wrote, "Come to my office in the noon on my paper." I was afraid that I was in big trouble. But when I entered her office, her charming smile welcomed me instead of her yelling. She asked about my background and decided to offer me extra help in the course. So I started to go to her office every day and have lunch together while learning English and humanities from her. Later, we started to broaden up our topics and start talking about pretty much everything. This is the beginning of our story. She inspired me so much that I was completely dependent on her. One day, without telling me, she had disappeared. After she left the school to go to Europe for an unknown reason, I suddenly felt I had lost my support. I slacked off, become lazy. I even lost my confidence. This affected my schoolwork, and high school teachers are not always that patient. In understanding each student's individual problem and solve them, I started to doubt my abilities. I started to dismiss everything that happened around me, and start to not care. I want to make a change to become the student who I want to be, but my work ethics never match my dream. Two years went, and it felt like a dream. I was daydreaming every day. I was a ghost walking around school with a human body, without a soul. Now I had no mentor to help me with my problem, and I felt lost. At the end of my junior year, a daughter who is a history teacher at our school found me and said she was back and wanted to see me. I was surprised that she didn't bring me to her house, but to the hospital. I found out that she had a, th- a third-stage breast cancer. I was so shocked that I could not remember what we talked about that afternoon. I went to the hospital every day after school to see her. She started talking about her childhood and why she chose to be a teacher. She told me that she really felt accomplished to see her students succeed, and especially when she saw students with potential who hadn't shown their abilities yet. She wanted to inspire them and help them. Today, I wish I could tell her she also saved me. In our talks, she never asked about how I was doing in school, and I was scared to tell her that I was not successful at all. Until one afternoon, I had already sensed some strangeness. She didn't start talking as usual, but peacefully lied on bed. Looking out the window, later she asked me how school was. I hesitated and said, "Not too well." Then she asked, "Why is that?" I said, "I don't know. I always gave myself goals, but could never accomplish them." I was scared that I had disappointed her. However, she turned around, grabbed my hand, and said slowly but clearly, "I trust you." You will be great. I knew it the first time I saw you. You have the potential and the heart. I couldn't hold back my tears. I was deeply moved by the fact that when my friends, family, and even myself started to doubt my ability, Miss Hearn still to trust me. The next morning, her daughter found me again and informed me that she passed away in her sleep. I feel lost again. Just like a few years ago, when she left the school, later her daughter handed me a letter and said it was the last thing Mister has written. 
I opened it, and it said, "Tommy, trust yourself. You can do it." And I am with you. I suddenly feel the strong motivation to work hard and become the person who she thought I was. Later in the semester, I put all my efforts into my work with a passion. Not only did I exceed in school, but I also received a national second place for my engineering design project. Within a few months, I grew up and developed correct work ethics. Here I am, studying at college and trying to fulfill my dream. Although I could not say that I'm always the best, but I could say that I have tried the hardest. Even if I fail my goals, I will have no regrets because I have given all my effort. In fact, the only regret I might have is that I didn't learn the lesson earlier, so I could have been the person Miss Hern saw me as. And I wish I could tell her, "Thank you for your patience, trust, and encouragement. I did not let you down."